I was saying earlier that the subject of our first novel, uh, Sorting Out Billy, is three friends who get embroiled in this situation where one of them is being abused. Um, now, Carol, you said before the break, you've been in that situation and you yeah. chose to stand back. So your friend is turning up with bruises, you have no idea how this it, is no, going No, it's obviously to... being abused physically and mentally by her partner. Right. And it, you know, obvious to the point of, you know, you just... To, to the point where you can't say anything, because if I knew that she was not prepared to admit it, even to me, and so it, I really don't think it's, it's anybody's place to turn around. So it's like you can't tell an alcoholic to stop drinking. They've got to want to stop drinking themselves. Mm. And it's, I think it's the same yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, but you're strangely sort of polite in these things, Carol. No. I mean, I was looking at the statistics on this, and apparently in the average uh, example of a woman who's being abused, it will take 35 incidents of violence before she will go and report it to the police. So with your friend, if you take that simple statistic, I know it's not exactly uh, appropriate, you know, she's going to get thumped 35 times before she makes yeah, it. Yeah, I know. If you could short circuit um, that process, would absolutely. that not be a valuable thing to do? And maybe not survive 35 times either. Yeah, but if you interfere, uh, more often than not, you don't get thanks for it and you end up falling out with that person. The number of times people You don't want abused, thanks, they, you're not going in you, there You interfere, thanks. you interfere, you get them away from them and then they go back to them and then you're the enemy, you're the person in the I'd wrong place. I'd rather do you that. Know, I'd rather I'd do rather that. fall out with them and make sure that she's still alive and she's still safe. If she goes back to them, then that's their no, choice. But it's it's Carol. I think sometimes it can make things worse. You know, the more people get involved, you know, the more danger there probably is at home with, with, the, with the, the man who is abusing the woman. And so I wouldn't. I, but the thing is, the people who are in those situations, the women especially who are in those situations, they know what's going on and they know what's wrong. You know, and I know that it's, it's easier said than done to just say, get out of it and go and get help. But as soon as you tell, as soon as you absolutely tell someone, one person, that you're in danger and you need help, then you can do something about but it. But all the time they're in denial, okay, you can't do anything about it. But you're saying they know what's going on, and it's, inter it's interesting that you say that, because there's a new Domestic Violence Crime and Victims Bill that's going to be discussed uh, or given a second reading um, in the Commons this week, and they're discussing tougher measures for perpetrators of domestic violence. But as part of that, the British Crime Survey says that two-thirds of abused women do not recognise the violence as a crime. Because they're brainwashed. Yeah, so Absolutely. you're saying they know what's going on. If they wanted help, they'd go and get it. But that's not what the evidence suggests. Yeah, but, you know, not to recognise it as a crime. They might not see it as a crime, <laughs> you know, in the sense that they could be taken away by police and locked but up. They but they see, they know, but they know, no, but they know it's wrong.